Nottingham Forest have just been hit with a four-point deduction from the Premier League for financial mismanagement and it's led to them falling into the relegation zone. Now they're in trouble and they need someone to come and help them. And that's where I come in. I'm giving myself five years as manager of Forest, not just to save them from relegation with that deduction, but also build them up, climb them up the table and hopefully push for European football, get them back to the place that they were many moons ago when they won the Premier League or the equivalent of and also won two top European titles back to back in 79 and 1980. Now the points deduction is one thing, but this is made even more challenging by the fact that Forest only have a three million pound balancing game, zero transfer budget. And if we have a look at their debts and loans, there's over 100 million pounds of debt at the club. And they've also got one of the biggest squads in the Premier League. If I highlight all of these players, yes, there's maybe a handful that are out on loan, but that is 42 players here. Even if we took 10 away from from those being the loanies out of the club. There's still a 30 plus man squad that we've got to contend with. But there's definitely talent in the squad with big players like Ibrahim Sangare. Argentinian Nicolas Dominguez also looks like a good option in the midfield. And we've got the main man up top, Taiwo Awoni, who we'll be hoping can bag the goals for us. And we've even got some good young talent like former Manchester United player Anthony Alanga. Callum hudson Adoy, formerly of Chelsea with huge, huge potential. And also Morgan Gibbs-White, who's been brilliant since his move from Wolves to Forest. So whilst we do have some great players, I think the hardest part of this won't be bringing people in and improving the squad, but in fact these first couple of seasons where we're trying to thin this squad out and get rid of some of the deadwood. As you can see, I've used the editor to give us that minus four point deduction. Everton in game, Sports Interactive have given a minus 10 point deduction. In real life that got changed to be less points, but that's just what it is here in the FM world. But we're just worrying about ourselves. We've got that four point deduction. And if we have a look at the season preview, because of those minus four points it seems like we are odds on favourites to go down in that third relegation spot with Sheffield United and Burnley supposedly better than us with a better chance of staying up. So things definitely won't be easy here at Forest. I think we need to ride out the first few seasons before we're really going to be able to build anything. But seeing as we've got no transfer budget, we're going to have to sell some players if we want to bring some players in. So let's see what transfers we can do in season one. Before I show you the first season's transfers though, if you guys could do me a huge favor, I'd massively appreciate it if you could scroll down and click the like button. It takes a few seconds and it helps me out more than you could imagine. On top of that, make sure you comment down below what rebuild you want to see next because every one we do here on the channel is based on your suggestions. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that button as we push for 40,000 subscribers and hopefully soon 50,000. A big portion of you aren't subscribed that are watching and if just a few of you guys did hit that button we'd see a huge increase in subscriber numbers and the final thing is I have a Patreon linked in the description where you can get access to these save files in return for supporting me as a creator whether that's from season one two three four or five you'll have the file for each year so you can give it a go and see if you can do a better job than me but with that being said let's see who we bought in and who we sold in season one and the first transfer to speak about is Cheku Koyate the Senegalese 33 year old midfielder came in from Palace on a free last season Season, played 21 games, scored a goal, was a decent squad player, but now has moved on to Ligue to Lyon for 700,000. It's a good move for him. And after that transfer, there was nothing else to talk about. No sales, no incomings. We couldn't bring anyone in because we had no cash and we couldn't sell anyone because nobody was interested in our players. So we're just going to have to deal with a squad that Forrest have put together here in season one. But don't worry, I'm sure in future seasons, there'll be a lot of transfer work done, particularly as we start clearing off some of these players on high wages and the reason I say that is if you have a look here we have got so many players on mega money and a lot of them aren't the best. I mean, John Joe Shelby out on loan on 80 grand a week. Chris Wood, 80 grand a week. 34-year-old Felipe, 70 grand a week. We've also got Origi on loan on 85,000. Lots of money being spent where I don't really think we need to be spending it. So we're going to try and sort that out going forward. I've got to be frugal in season one with what we've done. But tactically, I have settled on something. I'm going for a five-back shape, kind of out of necessity over anything else because we have so many centre-backs and that's a lot of where our quality is in the squad 
in those centre back positions. We're playing a five, two complete wing backs, two wide centre backs, and a ball playing defender. Midfield with a box to box and an advanced playmaker, and then two inverted wingers, one looking to score, one looking to cross with an advanced forward up top. And if we have a look at our best team right now, this is supposedly what it would be. We've got Vladikomos in goal, the Greek international at the age of 29. Felipe, previously mentioned, 34 year old Brazilian. Former Wolves defender Willy Bolly is at the back alongside Musa Niakate, the Senegalese international. In the wing back positions, we've got Ola Aina, formerly of Chelsea, and Nuno Tavares. frula has got a transfer arranged to join Bologna, so we'll forget about him. But we've got Danilo in the midfield, the 22 year old Brazilian. And then a young forward line with the American on loan Giovanni Reina. We've also got Callum Hudson Adoy and Taiwo Awoni, who you've met. I think we're relying a little bit too much on some of these loaned in players. And there's also a lot of rubbish players in this squad that I want to move on, but we can't really do that in season one. For now, we've just got to hope we can survive in the Premier League and from there, we'll make some changes. So let's see what we can do in our first season. And considering the squad we had, I actually think our first season has gone pretty well. The FA Cup was disappointing. We were knocked out in the third round by West Brom. And the Carabao Cup, also a third round exit to Fulham. But the Premier League was much better, where we finish in a very, very good 10th place spot. 48 points above the likes of Chelsea and Brighton. And actually, if we did have our four points that we had deducted, we would have finished in ninth ahead of Brentford. We won 14, lost 14 and drew 10 with a four goal difference. It was a very good season and something to build off of going forward. I really did not think we'd have that good of a start. Sheffield United, Burnley and Bournemouth all going down. I think the three teams predicted relegation have all stayed up, including Everton, who managed 32 points with that 10 point deduction. Whilst we did do well on 48 points, there's a lot of rubbish this year. I mean, everyone from Everton downwards did not surpass that 40 point mark, didn't even get to 33 points. All of these teams on 32 points or less. So maybe that's helped us out. Liverpool were the eventual title winners. And whilst I did complain about the size of the squad, it was actually that that helped us out quite a lot this season with players from across the pitch contributing. There was no real star, but lots of great performers. I mean, Sangare was brilliant with seven goals. Gibbs White was our best player with 10. We had Neokarte chipping in with four. Awani getting 17 goals in that striker position. Chris Wood even chipping in with two. We had six goals from Hudson Adoy, six from Alanga. Players all across the pitch contributing to what was a brilliant first season. And it has now meant that we'll be heading into season two, safe in the Premier League with £45 million to spend and 150 grand of wage budget. We've got a lot of Deadwood to sell. A lot of those players that were loaned out will come back and we'll try and shift a lot of our wage bill on to try and free up some more funds and also not spend all of it because we need to help the finances at the club where there's still a pretty significant bit of debt and also our balance isn't the best it's not terrible but they're giving us more money to spend than what the club actually has so we need to be careful but with that being said let's buy some players let's move some players on and hopefully build a better squad for season two and as predicted, it was a huge transfer window. We moved on £80 million worth of players and bought in players worth £40 million. So let's get into the sales. Quickly moving through the players that were released at the end of their contract to free up wages. Scott McKenna is gone. Wayne Hennessy has also left. Chris Wood has moved to Dinamo Moscow. And the centre-back Felipe has gone to Palmeiras in Brazil. We've also seen Harry Toffolo move to Parma for 250000 Kwang Hee Jo, the South Korean forward, has moved to Montpellier for a fee of four. 425k. John Joe Shelby is also off to Parma with Toffolo for 2.9 million. Matt Sells moves to West Brom for 3 million pounds. Yes, we lose a bit of money on him, but I have no idea why Forrest had him, Vladikomos, and also Matt Turner on the books. Remo Froiler, as mentioned, had that agreed deal to join Bologna and he has joined them for 4.3 mil. Emmanuel Dennis has left after his loan at Watford was pretty productive, attracting the interest of Schalke for 4.5 million. Speaking of our goalkeeper department earlier though, Vladikomos has also moved on, joining Al Quadzia at the age of 30 for a fee of 8.5 million. Joined last year, barely played. When he did play, he did well enough that he did attract the interest of the Saudi side. But our big sale also involves Saudi with Ibrahim Sangare, our best player according to the game. He's moved on to join Al Nasser for 56 million, rising to 59. We got a lot of money for him. He was offered 900 grand a week there. He wasn't going to turn it down and he definitely wasn't going to stay here at Forest. So he moved on and that gave us 
us a big, big boost to our transfer budget to bring some players in. We were only left with Matt Turner in goal, so now we have some real competition, signing Leopold Volscheid. He's a 25-year-old Swedish international keeper with a few years left in the tank yet before he even reaches his prime. He was signed by Blackburn, did fairly okay in the championship for a Blackburn side that looked to be shipping quite a lot of goals. We spent 7 million rising to 10 on him. If you don't know, I only sign players that our scouts recommend, and he was the best goalkeeper that they happened to find that was actually affordable. So he comes in. Leopold Wallstedt is a new goalkeeping option. We then added some depth at centre-back, bringing Mies Hilgers into the club, who is perfect for that wide centre-back role. He's got a lot of physical ability. He's quick and he's tall. He is signed from SC20 in the Eredivisie for £10 million, rising to 11 after a fantastic season for them. He's got a big future, I'm sure. At the age of 23, he's a very nice addition to our team. And this one might be controversial. We have signed Kernan Dewsbury Hall from Leicester, who did not get promoted. Now, if you don't know, Leicester and Forest have a pretty big rivalry. So to sign him from Leicester, it means that the fans are going to take a little bit of a while to warm up to him. But I have faith in him. He's been really good in the championship. 25 million rising to 30 was the fee for the 25-year-old, who looks perfect for those midfield roles that we have, either box-to-box -box or advanced playmaker. And it did actually say when we signed him, it's going to take a while for the fans to warm up. So fingers crossed they do. Fingers crossed we get good performances. If not, the fans might turn on us a little bit. But with those transfers made and some of the loanies from last season moving away from us, our first 11 now looks so much different to what it did before. Matt Turner is now our best goalkeeper, the former Arsenal player. We've got Hilgers, Murillo and the Akate. Murillo is a very talented young Brazilian defender that I believe has been playing quite a lot for Forest in real life this season. Former Liverpool player Nico Williams is at right wing back. Olaena keeps his place in the left with Dominguez and Dewsbury Hall as our new midfield. Hudson Adoy, Gibbs White and Awoni making up the rest of the team. And if we now have a look at our first team squad, we've gone down from, what was it, 43 players, I think it was, to 24. So there's been a lot of change here this season. And we're just hoping that in season two, we can have a similar result to season one whilst doing this process of clearing the squad out and making them a more sustainable club for the future. This year, the board wanted to avoid a relegation battle and the season prediction has us in 16th place, which would do exactly that. 300 to 1 odds of winning the title. We've got Fulham, Southampton, West Brom and Luton considered worse than us. So fingers crossed we can live up to the expectation, stay up here in the Premier League for another year. The facilities at the club aren't great either, so I'm slowly trying to work on them, also while sorting out the finances and improving the first 11. It's a big job here at Forest to fix everything, but we're doing our best, so let's see what we can do in Season 2. And with our smaller squad this season, we built a more closely knit team who were able to perform better on the pitch. And that was proved in games like this against Liverpool, where after an early lead was taken through Darwin Nunes, we managed to equalise from a corner. Gibbs White with a very weird corner in that ended up with a langer, somehow chipping Allison with a header. Then in the 40th minute, Williams went forward and we really were playing some beautiful football at this point. The captain on the day, Gibbs White, found Awani, who hit a brilliant shot from range to beat Allison in off the bar. Then in the 47th minute, Gibbs White carried it forward to Bowler, who was on loan last year and is now playing a pretty critical role in the team, assisting Gibbs White, who has been the star of the show in this Liverpool match. Liverpool did pull a goal back to make it 3-2, but Awani hit a penalty in the 65th. That made it 4-2, and that was one of our better performances of the season. But there were a lot of games like that, where, as you can see in the stats here, we actually dominated big clubs at their stadium. This was at Anfield. And it led to a fantastic eighth place finish in the league, only three points away from both Brentford and Chelsea ahead of us. So if we had somehow picked up a few extra points, we could have found ourselves in a sixth or seventh place spot, not too far away from Manchester United in that fifth place position. So it was a really good year. Yes, the Cups, we're not doing great in, but we're not going to talk about them. Now, eighth place doesn't give us any kind of European football, but it is a fantastic finish with 18 wins and 14 losses. If we have a look, you can see towards the end of the season, especially, we really started to pick up some form. We we had a bit of a slump mid-season but at the start of the season we were flying and it was just a really good year overall and it did take a little while for things to start to click but when they did we got great performances. I mean Awani getting 20 goals for us. We had Moussini Akate with six. Josh Bowler who I mentioned earlier was on loan last season at Cardiff did okay there. Came into the squad this year and with only nine starts hit eight goals in the Premier League. We also had Gibbs White continuing his form. Alanga getting better as was Hudson-Odoi. Overall 
overall, having this much better balanced squad led to better performances. Who would have guessed it? You don't need a 42-man squad, Nottingham Forest, if you're watching, take that into account. But yes, it's been a good year in Season 2. We're now heading into our third season, hopefully pushing for some European football with £60 million to spend and 500 grand of wage budget. We're looking much better financially, 39 million in the balance and the debts and loans have ticked down pretty much all the way and it won't be long before they're cleared. So we've got a big chunk of cash to spend and some European places to try and obtain. So let's sell some players on, bring some players in and keep improving this team. Before I show you the transfers though, a bit of a weird one, we are in the Conference League, which I don't get because it didn't show that on the table last season. Maybe some kind of cup competition win led to some of the places being filtered down further, but we have got a European place, we are in the Conference League, and that did give us some extra momentum in the transfer market in terms of the players that we could attract. Firstly, the sales though, Joe Worrell has moved to Hull for just under £2 million. Lewis O'Brien also goes to Hull for about £3 million, so we got £5 million off the Tigers for our team. And Oriel Mangala has joined Monza or Brianza in game for £3.7 million in Italy. Was on loan last season at Getafe, didn't do great. He's just not really the kind of player that I fancy, so I was happy to let him go. And again, we were pretty sensible in the market, only signing players that would actually help the team and not threaten our squad harmony. So Liam Delap is in as an understudy to Awoni up top. He didn't really have any competition, so he paid £5 million for the player, was on loan with Hull in the first season and did pretty well, 16 in 36. Now he's a couple years older, at 22, and ready to play Premier League football as an understudy to our main man up top. We've also signed this player who has a fantastic head of hair. This is Cesar Huerta, a Mexican international with three goals in seven caps from Pumas out in Mexico. 10.75 million is the release clause fee for a fantastic left wing option who's got pace he's direct he can dribble and he can cross he's the kind of player that I think is really going to improve our team and take us up that next step and that also goes for this man Leif Davis who we've signed as a left wing back to play in our team if you don't know he's currently an Ipswich player and doing brilliantly in the championship in the FM world he ended up signing for Brighton who I believe are now relegated into the championship which made a lot of their players available he was one that was available at a good price 13.75 million for the 10 technically gifted left wing back. He's English as well and fits perfectly into our squad. And then we keep improving our defence. We've added a new centre-back option who's probably going to play on the left-hand side of that back three. This is Lorenzo Perola, an Italian under-21 international, four-star player according to the game when compared to our team. A tackler who can progress the ball well and he's also quick and strong, signing for £21.5 million from Salernitana in the second division of Italy where he was fantastic last year in Serie B. Yes, it's a lot of money, but I think he's a brilliant improvement at centre-back. And this team is now stacked with talent. I think we could definitely do have an improvement on Matt Turner in goal, but Hilgers, Murillo and Perola is a brilliant back line. Leif Davis and Nico Williams as two players from the United Kingdom at wing-back with Dewsbury Hall and Gibbs White making up that all-English central midfield. Bowler is apparently still our best option on the right wing with Huerta on the left and Awoni up top, but that's not including the likes of hudson Odoi, Alain Danilo, Omar Richards, Liam Delap, Dominguez, Niacarte, plenty of great players in this squad. We're really creating something good here at Forest, I feel, and we're going to need it going into this season in the Europa Conference League. Three years in, we've managed to deal with a points deduction and financial issues to reach European football, and now we're predicted a 12th place finish, 200 to 1 odds of winning the title. Obviously, we're not going to do that just yet, but this team is definitely ready now to take the next step, hopefully qualify again for some European football whilst also putting on a show in the Conference League. Now, season three was a very special year for us. In the FA Cup, we managed to make the quarterfinal. We lost to Southampton in extra time, but it was a good effort and much better than previous seasons. Similar story in the Carabao Cup too. We lost to Tottenham 2-1 in the quarterfinal. If we had beat them, we would have made it to a semi and it's a much better performance now in the Cups. And then we get on to the Conference League where we were fantastic in the league phase, ended up coming up in the knockouts against Bilbao and also Lille, leading to a final against Germany 
German side FC Köln went the 95th minute of all times bowler to Awoni to Alanga to tap it in and to give us a European trophy win in only our third season. Now some will say it's only the Conference League but it is still a massive trophy for our club here at Forest to win and it really shows signs of where we're going as a team. Now in the league we ended up finishing in seventh place a very similar points total to previous seasons but finishing one place higher. Chelsea, City, Villa, Liverpool, Arsenal and Tottenham all ahead of us. Man U finishing in ninth place gave us the extra position boost this year. Leeds were very close in a good season from them but we won 18, we lost 13, we drew 7. With an 11 goal difference we might not be scoring too many but we're definitely building a strong side that's doing well across all competitions. And there were some really surprising performances this year. As you would expect Parola, Dewsbury Hall, Gibbs White all chipped in. Awani continued to get better and better scoring 28 goals in all comps this year. But Liam Delap managed to chip in with 29 goals and I wondered how because Awoni was starting most games but actually Delap was playing often off this right hand side where he was electric. That helped us to have a fantastic season and whilst it did mean less minutes for the likes of Alanga, players like Hudson Odoi and Dominguez were chipping in this season as was Huerta who came in in his first year and hit nine goals in all comps. Granted only one of those was in the Prem. Either way though we cannot complain we are flying here with Forest and going into season four now our penultimate season we've got 40 mil to spend and 350 grand of wage budget. There's slowly some improvements to our facilities too but we are working on that actively to get them improved and get them in better stead. So we're trying to build Forest sustainably for the future so we're not going to go crazy in season four. That being said we definitely need to add some quality if we want to crack those Champions League places. Before we see the transfers for season four though, don't forget if you are enjoying the video to smash that like button for me. It really, really will help the video out. And on top of that, if you're interested, there's a Football Manager Discord in the description where it's all things Football Manager. We have a great community of over 900 people now, I think it is, maybe 800, maybe I'm over egging it. But either way, lots of people who like FM that share their tactics, their saves, their wonder kids. They even talk about real football and just general live chat. It's a great place to be if you enjoy Football Manager or you just looking to chat to some new people so make sure you check that out if you want to but let's check out the transfers where we finally improved our goalkeeping position because Matt Turner has moved on at the age of 32 he'll be playing for PSV next season in the Eredivisie so good luck to him we also move on Nicolas Dominguez the Argentinian 28 year old has signed for Al Faya in Saudi Arabia for 8.5 mil rising to 11 Danilo has also gone the Brazilian has moved to Aston Villa for 8 million pounds wasn't playing much over recent seasons he wanted out so fair enough to him we were willing to let him go and sadly it's also the end of Ola Aina who only wanted to extend his contract if he was considered a star player at the club now I do like him as a player but do these kind of average match ratings goals and assist returns really suggest he should be a star player not to me so he didn't offer him the deal he wasn't willing to go down any further than that so he moves back to Italy to play for Genoa our new and improved goalkeeper is James Trafford and whilst Burnley fans might not have liked him too much this season in game he's a very good goalkeeping option with loads of years yet to get better we have signed the 23 year old from Burnley for 17 million pounds where he's been pretty good between the sticks for a struggling Burnley team rising to 19 million but he is now our new number one we also got some players in on a free Lazar Samadzic is a brilliant addition to the midfield the 24 year old Serbian has signed from Udinese where he's been exceptional in Syria and that's where we did a lot of our shopping this season also bringing in Emil Holm the Swedish international to be our backup right wing back. He comes in from Spezia on a free transfer, having been released at the end of his deal following a fantastic year for them in the second division. And we've also improved our midfield, adding Juventus youngster Niccolo Fagioli here. The 25-year-old Italian international has signed for 8.5 million, rising to 9.5. Wasn't getting the game time at Juve, but is clearly a very talented option who can play as a six. But for us, it's likely going to be the advanced playmaker behind Gibbs White in the midfield. Field. But our big money signing was our left wing back and I'm hoping this guy will be the answer for years to come with Leif Davis as his backup. He replaces Ola Aina, it's 25 year old Ryan Ain't Nori who's been fantastic in real life this year for Wolves in game. Maybe not so much but he's a player that definitely has the attributes to do a good job for us. £13 million is the fee. So again we were pretty respectable in the transfer market, not spending too much money and building a strong squad where our best 11 is now Trafford with Hilgers, Murillo, 
Murillo and Parola, both of which, Murillo and Parola, have been attracting interest because of how good they are now. We've also got Nico Williams and Eight Nori as the wing backs, Gibbs White and Dewsbury Hall in the middle, with Delap, Huerta, and Awoni considered our best forward line. We've built a fantastic squad, and it's now led to our season preview, having us in a solid 11th place, 100 to 1 odds of winning the title. Often in these rebuilds, I see those odds shoot back, so to see them going up every year is definitely a positive. On top of that, we're of course going to be in the Europa League this season. If we can somehow win that and then win the Champions League in season five, it will be an incredible feat for this rebuild, but we're obviously a very long way away from doing that just yet. But with that being said, we can only win it if we play. So let's simulate ahead and see how our team does in season four. Now this year was the year of a cup run for Forrest and in the FA Cup we made it into a semi-final against Chelsea where we opened the scoring early on Liam Delap from the penalty spot in the fifth minute. Chelsea though went forward in the 31st minute and after a bit of a struggle trying to clear the ball it came out to Lavia on the edge of the area who lamped this home with the help of a deflection to make it 1-1 in the cup semi-final here at Wembley. Then though in the 69th minute Nia Carte steps up from the spot and made it 2-1. Are we penalty merchants? Maybe but in the 94th minute when it looked like we were going to go through into the final. Conor Gallagher carried it forward to Matthias Yule who bent this goal past Trafford in the net and that took us to extra time and seemingly penalties until the 119th minute where Alanga went forward on the right hand side, used his pace to combine with Holm and Fagioli who played a brilliant chip ball over the top past Laporte and Awoni slotted past Lanina and that meant we were heading to an FA Cup final. We were drawn against a fantastic Man City team in the final and whilst most teams would have struggled and probably shirked away from a challenge Gibbs White stepped up and helped put our Forest side 1-0 up in the 35th minute but we weren't done there because then in the 56th minute we went down the right through Alanga who's been key to a lot of our big moments in recent seasons. Ruben Diaz made a mistake as did Rico Lewis and even arguably Melier leading to Huerta tapping it in and that meant we won the FA Cup final against Man City 2-0. And overall we had a very good year. Semi-finals of the Carabao to Arsenal all the Europa League we put on an absolute show starting off in the league phase getting a second place finish winning seven matches against some great teams and only losing once to Galatasaray three points away from the top of the pile Chelsea that then put us into the round of 16 where we knocked out Valencia in a 4-3 aggregate win the quarterfinals we managed to beat Borussia Dortmund 5-2 a fantastic result Chelsea did prove too much for us only by one goal however and they eventually went on to win the tournament very comfortably so if we had beat them, there was a very good chance we could have won the Europa League back to back after winning the Conference League. But Chelsea were great this year. They managed to win the Premier League, but we had our best season yet, finishing in fifth place, 67 points, 13 losses, four draws and 21 wins. 11 goal difference is far less than anybody around us, but it just shows how tight we are at the back in this five back formation. I don't actually think this team with this formation will have the quality to win the Prem for a few years. Maybe if you get the save files on the Patreon you might do better than me but I don't think we're going to be able to do it in our fifth season we'll give it our best shot though and see what we can do either way we're going to be in the Champions League which is a nice milestone to reach even though we've got no chance of winning that and there's eight teams now qualifying for European football in the Prem so if we keep this up and even maybe slip a few places we'll still get a European place so things are looking good financially there's 49 million pounds in the balance 63 million in the transfer budget and the debts and loans are pretty much emptied now slowly working their way down and if we have a look at our best performers from this year once again we're going to see the main names at the top Dewsbury Hall doing very well Parola too Gibbs White with 12 goals Hilgers with six Fagioli with a great first year Liam Delap and Awani getting nearly 50 goals between them whilst Huerta stepped up with 15 we've even seen massive improvements to our facilities too now so everything is on the up here at Nottingham Forest we'll hopefully start producing some young talent from the academy as well we've the improved facilities. Now though we've got one last season and a lot of money to spend to roll the dice and try and improve this team for one final go at trying to win the Prem. 
Starting with the sales, we've lost our Swedish backup goalkeeper, Leopold Volstedt. He's gone to Newcastle now to be their backup. Because of the recent incomings that we've signed, there was no real room for Alanga anymore, so I've let him go out on loan to Hoffenheim for the year. Musa Niakate has also left a leader of the club and a fantastic player over the last few seasons, but now 31, offered the chance to go Saudi, and he wanted to do it. £11 million is the fee. The squad were very upset that he left, but I think we'll make do without him. And Lazar Smardzic, who he signed only a season or so ago on a free transfer, didn't play much, started three times, wanted out, so he said, yep, yeah, fine, 25 million. He gets some great wages, makes his 25 million pounds in profit. We're not complaining there. Then we get to the incomings, where Nick Pope is coming in to be our new backup goalkeeper at the age of 35. He's not great, but he was available on a free to be that second in command. Sander Berg's contract expired at Burnley, formerly of Sheffield United, of course. He's been around the English divisions for a while now. He's been really good in the championship and doesn't want to be anything more than a squad player, so he'll work perfectly as some depth in the midfield. Nona Madueke has joined us for an absolute bargain fee. Really not rated in Football Manager currently at the minute, particularly in this fifth season, but the scouts rated him highly and the attributes on paper did look pretty good. So we have paid a grand total of 900k to Chelsea. Something must have gone on there because he was transfer listed. Barely played it all last season or any season really, so I think we've got ourselves a bit of a bargain. I think he's going to be a very nice addition to our squad. And on the left, we've added Estanis Pedrola, the 23-year-old Spanish under-21 international, who I imagine is going to go on to be a full international if he does well here for us. 27 million quid is the fee. Great for Sampdoria. Made his way to Roma in Serie A and did fantastic there too. Now he's coming to the Prem and hopefully he can score tons of goals and get a load of assists to help our league position. And our Niacarte replacement is none other than Zeno de Bas, one of the best ball-playing defenders in the world now 23 and a Belgian international a regular one too he signed for a big fee of 38 million from Anderlecht most teams weren't willing to pay that money for him and that's why he was still there in Belgium despite being so good but we had the cash to spend we had Niacate leaving and it made sense to think about the future when bringing him in so he now signs as one of our best defenders so this is what's finishing as our best 11 here at Nottingham Forest we've got James Trafford in goal a backline of Murillo Pedrola and Zeno de Bas Nico Williams and Ryan Ait Nori as the wing backs with Dewsbury Hall and Fagioli in the middle. Pedrola and Madueke on the right and Awani through the middle. And now before any Forest fans watch this and complains about Dewsbury Hall, let me just show you. He has been worth the money in the end. Every season done pretty well getting goals and assists. I think if he did that and worked hard for the team, you might end up forgiving him if that ever did happen in real life, which I'm sure it never would. We've got a good bench as well on top of everything else that we've got here at the club. And we've now got a season preview of 50 to 1 odds, ninth place finish. And that shows you the amount of progress we've had every year, getting better and better. We're now a four-star reputation club with great facilities. And we're going to give a crack at winning the Premier League. We're also in the Champions League this year. And we're going to try and win maybe the Carabao Cup, maybe the FA Cup. Give those a go with the squad we've got. Fingers crossed we can bring home some silverware. Now, the year that this Forest team has had in Football Manager needs to be seen to be believed. Obviously, we were in the Champions League this season and we put up a good account for ourselves. In the league phase, we managed to qualify for the knockout playoffs where we faced Sociedad, beat them and then beat Tottenham in the round of 16. That then put us up against Ajax, who we beat 5-0 at home to help us overcome them and make up a semi-final in the Champions League for our Forest team against Real Madrid. Now, we went to the Bernabeu and came back 4-1 down, bringing them to the Forest ground Round, where early on in the 18th minute Huerta hit this big shot into the top left corner and that technically made it 4-2 on aggregate. From there we carried on going. Holm received the ball on the right, found Madueke, he squared the ball to Delap who then found Huerta and again the Mexican scored for his pass Courtois. That made it 4-3 on aggregate and just as it looked like the comeback was on there was a throwing on the left hand side for our team. We played a cross in, it found Madueke at the back post who tucked it past Courtois. That was now 4-4 on aggregate, 3-0 on the night, 60 minutes in but of course Real Madrid have got quality and despite our best efforts Bellingham to Musiala to Rodrigo was enough to put it past Trafford and now Real Madrid were leading on the night but we did not give up and only a few 
few minutes later, Leif Davis found Huerta, he played a cross in, Kieran Tierney of all people from Real Madrid made a mistake and Hudson Odoi managed to tuck it in to the back of the net. That was now 5-5. Then, in the 69th minute, this game was not over yet and after a bit of a mistake at the back from Fagioli, Rodrigo found Bellingham who hit this curling effort into the top right and at that point, our heads dropped. In the 70th minute, we were down by a goal in the Champions League but with 10 minutes to go, Hudson Odoi received the ball on the right, found a lap, his header went back to Fagioli who made the mistake earlier and his deflected shot ended up going in and that meant we were going and after extra time passed, we went into penalties against Real Madrid. And after every player scored, Militao stepped up and Trafford came up with a big save and then our new signing, the Spaniard, Astanis Pedrola, bagged the ball into the back of the net and that meant we were going to a Champions League final. And after the comeback victory against Real Madrid, anything was possible and despite having none of the ball during the game, this ball went through to Awoni behind the AC Milan defence and after smashing it past Magnon, nothing else happened and we somehow won the Champions League with Nottingham Forest in five seasons. How we did that, I don't know because we only finished in seventh place in the league so it definitely wasn't our best league performance although points wise, it certainly wasn't the worst at 67 points. We were runners up in the Community Shield, got knocked out of the Carabao quite early and the FA, we made it to the quarterfinal, knocked out by Arsenal. So whilst we never even cracked the top four during this rebuild, we somehow won the Conference League and this Champions League run was just exceptional. Just to prove I'm not lying as well, let's go to the schedule. You can see everything that happened. We were very good in the league phase, beat Real Sociedad in penalties in the playoffs, then beat Tottenham 4-1 at home. That helped us get across after a 3-3 draw. Ajax, you can see we lost over there at the Johan Cruyff Arena, but then at the City ground, we managed to win 5-0. Uh, Real Madrid won is a story that you've just seen. Completely crazy game. We've absolutely smashed it here. I cannot believe that we've done this with Forrest. And if we have a look, we have got some heroes of the club to thank. Parola, great this year. Fagioli, great too. As was Ryan Aitnori and Taiwo Awoni. As you can see, not many green performances. Not our best season by any stretch, but we did manage to bag that champion league that's led to a huge reputation increase for the club financially there's now 52 million quid in the balance 77 million to spend and hardly anything in the debts and loans forest right now have a minus four points deduction but maybe in five years they could be winning the champions league the only thing they need to do is put me in charge as manager and they might see it happen